Gentlemen, what's going on? I appreciate all the love on the last video. I'm obviously making this video as a follow-up to answer all the problems. It seemed to be that there was a lot of people having similar problems, so hopefully this video, I'll be able to cover everything. If you still have questions after this video, just leave them in the comments again. I'll try to get to everything. There's a lot of people dealing with the same stuff, so I'll just go ahead and start. It seems to be the first thing that the problem that people are dealing with is they'll get into the game, they'll set everything up correctly, completely fine, everything works, blah, blah, blah. But the moment they get into the game, they're unable to aim and they're unable to shoot. So what that, the fix for that, truthfully, what I found is I'm currently running version 3.3.3. There's no problems with it whatsoever. I'll link this in the bio. The fix that I found for this um, is you just have to download a little bit later of a, or earlier version of DS4 Windows. And what that is, is 3.2.9, which is right here. Obviously, again, I, like I said, I'll link this. You have to download the 64-bit version. It'll do the same thing. It'll go to your downloads. You'll just open up and then run it as an administrator. It seems to be when you run it as an administrator, it allows it to take precedence over any other input to, or controller inputs that you have whether that be in steam which is another thing i wanted to cover too if you're running your game through steam in the settings like to the left there is a steam input for your controller what you have to do if you did all this stuff and it's still not working is you have to disable that it may even work before you even have to change your the version of that you downloaded i haven't even honestly tested it there's i think there's a couple people in the comments saying that they tried that and it ended up working for them so if that works absolutely do that try it but again any if it doesn't work no problem there's definitely a fix and I'll obviously try to help you and hopefully I'll cover it in this video. Another thing is that people were talking about how their controller is pulling down ridiculously hard. Like you can't even control it. And what that is, is it's dependent on the type of controller you have and everyone's honestly controllers are different. So mine was like, even since that video that I made last time, I've even upped my value. So what it is, I don't know if it's just with like your stick, your dead zone, what it is, what it might be. But I was on one strictly last time and now I'm on three. I raised it because it started pulling down just a little bit too hard. And if your controller is pulling down a little bit too hard, all you have to do is raise the values. I have buddies that are shooting with R1, R2, whatever. They're all the way up to 15 milliseconds. So what I would recommend doing is if it's pulling down real hard, put them all to five. You always want to keep this one to two milliseconds though, no matter what. You always want to keep it to two milliseconds. But all of these will just essentially raise them. So you, you can start at five. If it's pulling down, you're at five. You can then jump to 10. I just jump in five millisecond intervals. Because even if you get to 10 milliseconds, it's still pulling down, go up to 15. Once you get to 15, it may even start raising. So once you get over that incremental value that's stopping it from pulling down, you'll find a sweet spot, I promise. So if you get to 15 and it starts raising a little bit, drop to like 13 or 12. You make all these 13 or 12 milliseconds. I know the number seems high, but you have to think about it. it's in milliseconds. So it's really super, super, super tiny amounts of time in between all this. And that should give you the fix to essentially level out your aim. Some people, someone was saying earlier in the comment today, actually, that their gun was raising upwards. I don't know if they did it wrong, the the stick pull. I, I honestly have no clue. But again, if it's raising too much, if it's pulling down way too hard, drastically raise the values. If it, once you get up to the point where it starts raising again, you just drop the values down. And I promise you'll find a sweet spot. There's a sweet spot. It might be 10 milliseconds, it might be 11 milliseconds, 12, whatever. You'll find it. You just have to play around with it. That is what I found to be the fix for that. I'm trying to think of some other things. Um, I talked about in the last video real fast. I'm, again, I'm just making this video, trying to rip, cover everything raw, no cuts, no anything. I'll show you this stuff, so just bear with me. It'll be worth it, I promise. The input delay, your controller, if it's not overclocked with Hydus BF, I'll quickly pull it up. I'll quickly show you what to do real fast. Uh, mine's stuck at hard zero milliseconds. So what that is is... Um, I'll show you on Google real quick. It's going to, I'll link this site again. You're going to click on Hydus BF zip. It's going to zip download as a zip file. All you have to do is go to your downloads, right click on it, extract to your downloads and then open it up. And then when you open it up, hold on, I will show you real quick. It'll pull up to this. It'll look just like this. You'll click on driver. You'll click on setup.exe open this. So from here, it'll only say this. What you'll do is you'll go to all and then you'll be in here and you'll find your controller. My controller is obviously already overclocked, so mine is the, it'll say headset microphone, but if you look at it, it says DualSense wireless controller, obviously. So what you do is with this part highlighted, you click install service, come back, filter on device, install service, and then you click the polling rate or whatever, you, I, I believe it, yeah, it, it should be the polling rate, I guess it doesn't matter, but PS4 controllers, I believe, only go to 4,000. I'm on a PS5 controller, obviously, from a company called Cinch Gaming. It's got digital touch, mouse and triggers, face buttons, all that stuff. Two buttons on the back, but it doesn't even matter because I play double call anyway, whatever. But 8,000 is what I'm able to run, and then you put that, and then you hit install service. So what then it'll say, it'll have a different buy interval. It probably won't be one at that time. PS4 controller might be like four or five. It, 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 I highly doubt initially it'll be one. 
Once you get there, all you have to do is unplug your controller and then plug it back in and it should drop to one. If you get an error code, it'll be like error 557 or error 507. I honestly can't remember off the top of my head, whatever. But there are videos out there on YouTube for the fix, but the only fix that I have been able to find across all the people that I've helped do this is you have to get into your BIOS. And the way to do that for most people is you just restart your computer and you spam the delete key. You just spam the delete key a million times, as many times as you can, as fast as you can, until you, your BIOS will load up. And then when you, once you get in there, I would suggest all you have to do is find where your secure boot is. And all you have to do is disable that. Nothing's bad is gonna happen if you disable your secure boot. It just seems to be for some reason, I don't know what it does, but in regards to this overclocking service, but it allows this to actually work because if you do it without the secure boot, you can go into the registry edit and there's videos talking about stuff in the registry edit, but that's like ridiculous. It can be a little bit complicating because people will have certain files, other people won't have certain files, but the sure fix for over five people that I've helped was disabling secure boot in your BIOS. And then you just hit F10 once you're in your BIOS, save and exit and load back in and do everything I just said. Again, click on this, install service, but filter on device, install service. And then upon again doing this, this interval might be something different. You just unplug your controller, plug it back in and it's completely fine. Once you do this, you don't have to run this every time that you open your computer. It's officially overclocked. And if you go back into uh, the controller readings under your controller in DS4, it should be stuck at hard zero. And mine is, I saw some stuff in the comments talking about that DS4 adds input delay. I have no input delay truthfully on my games. I've been even able to even test it in game. It doesn't matter, but I'm gonna show you another program that allegedly helps with input delay. And if you played Fortnite, you definitely know what this is. A lot of people use this. It's called Anti-Micro. Um, I'll show you real quick. It's gonna. I'll link this site again. It'll be right here. You just hit download. It might be a zip file. I honestly don't remember if it is a zip file. But I answered a question in the comments too, talking about why uh, you keep the interface on the uh, Xbox 360 instead of like PlayStation if you have it. And the reason is because for this, for me, is this reason right here with Anti-Micro. So if you look, this game controller one, that's what takes priority, and it's uh, moduled as the. Uh, xbox controller so let me grab my controller real quick it's right here and i'll show you if you look i'll hold this and i'll just click the left stick or the left on the d-pad and what that is is it's showing all the buttons that i'm clicking so what you have to do is essentially click all your buttons at some point and it'll find and then it'll it'll allow you to identify where they're at so what you'll do is you'll come in here for the buttons you'll click this will be on click you'll click turbo and then you'll hit advance you'll go down to turbo and then you'll enable it and slide this all the way down it might be here you just slide all the way down and then save it, close, close, and then you do it for this one. Click it, turbo, advance, boom, boom, drag it all the way down, same thing. It is tedious, but once you get cooking, it might take like two or three minutes to do it. You go through all this, triggers too, or triggers, I dropped the dead zone all the way down just so it's quickly activated. I haven't even messed with any other stuff in this, the max zone. I, it really doesn't matter for me because I have digital touch mouse or triggers and bumpers anyway, so it kind of, doesn't really matter what my maximum would be. I just drop everything as low as I can. And you go through all these, the left shoulder is just, again, the, the L1, R1, right bumper, left bumper, whatever you want to call it, same thing, turbo. Just go through all that and you do, and you click it on and then you can save it. You can save the profile. But what I do is I run this every time I play COD. I mean, I don't know if it does anything, but if you played Fortnite, I mean, a lot of people, damn near everyone that was on PC was running this on Fortnite. So I keep this up. I don't know if it provides any true value into COD or even with the controller whatsoever at all. I, I really don't know, but I just keep it up because it seems to be, it, it's essentially an enhancement for your controller. So why not run it? Another thing, if you played Fortnite, you know it's time of resolution. This allegedly reduces input delay for your screen. I don't know if it does or doesn't. Again, uh, I'll link this real quick. I have it right here. This looks like a sketchy site, but it's not. You guys will be fine, I promise. I'll link it. Free download. You just click right here. It'll it'll pop up in your downloads up in the left corner. You probably can't see it because it's covered, but um, you'll come down back into your downloads. You'll open this. I run this as an administrator too, and then it might be at like one millisecond. I just spam maximum until it drops to the lowest value, and then I leave this running too while I'm playing, and then again with DS4, I do the same thing. I'm trying to think of some other stuff real quick. Let me get into the window settings now. So starting with your window settings, make sure you can go into your task manager. An important thing too, gentlemen, is with your task manager, you can just pull up, you can search task manager, whatever. I just right click on this task manager. I'm on Windows 11, so this is my performance tab, whatever, whatever. I have my specs listed in my bio of YouTube. 
So, I mean, I have like a pretty legit computer, whatever, but you need to make, you need to come in here and make sure your, 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 uh, XMP profile, which is, it sounds ridiculous. I can't show you because I, it would cut the recording off and you could, there's super, there's tons of videos that are super easy to follow. So what you have to do is you have to figure out what your RAM speed is. And this RAM speed plays an important role in regards to like the frames that you're able to pull. Mine's at 6,800 megahertz right now because I'm just testing something with the current board that I'm using. I'm cur currently about to install a Rogue Encore, which I don't know if for the gentlemen that know like what that is, it's just, it's a two dim board instead of like, so your board and the board I'm currently running has four slots of RAM. A lot of people don't know this, but you're only supposed to have two slots full because it allows you to get higher speeds essentially in layman's terms. It allows you to pull higher speeds of your stuff. So I've just been running tests with this mem tweaker over here just to see what I'm able to pull before I put in this two dim board. Because once I anticipate, once I get this two dim board, I'm, cause I have 7,200 megahertz RAM right now, which is pretty legit. Um, a lot of people run like DDR5. A lot of pre-builds have, if you have DDR5 or like 5,400 to maybe 6,200, I have 7,200, but I'm pulling 6,800 with all the other overclocks that I have done, whatever, whatever. But if you're on DDR4 RAM, it might say like 2140 or 33 or something. I think that's what's half. You need to come in here and check and make sure what your speeds are because if your XMP profile is not enabled, it will essentially, it's just bottlenecking the crap out of your computer because it's not allowing like processing speeds and just speeds of essentially it in turn affects your frames if, if it's not enabled. So you have to figure out what RAM you have DDR4, whether it's 3200 or 3600 megahertz RAM. You'll just go into your BIOS, look up a video and how to enable XMP profile. You literally just go into your BIOS, click, it'll say default value XMP profile. You'll just, it'll say DRAM frequency, excuse me. It'll say probably DRAM frequency. You go in there, you set it to the frequency that your RAM is and then you can work from there. If nothing will happen, don't be scared to like mess around in your BIOS, whatever. But that's that, that's the first thing. You wanna definitely wanna check that. Another thing too is you want to, this is like cliche, a lot of you boys have probably seen this already on TikTok, but for some reason, a lot of people don't know this. Um, I can just hit Windows and I. Let's pull up my settings. You wanna make sure your game, your game bar is completely off. There's a lot of stuff I'll show you real quick. You wanna make sure your game bar is completely off. I don't know why people run that. The capture, same thing. I have all this stuff off, all the recording stuff off, even the graphics settings, blah, blah, blah. Game mode, I have mine on. Some people say that, if you run game mode, your computer, it like they say it depends on the type of computer you have. Some say it helps your computer. Some say it doesn't. I mean, I have like a literal tank of a computer as far as, par, as, far as specs wise. And I run game mode, no problem. And it seems to be completely fine. There's other stuff in here too. I'll try to think of what I can uh, uh, talk about real quick in this video. Another thing that you can do is, an important thing that you should do is a lot of people don't know is you type view advanced system settings. You come in here. It'll say advanced. You want to click this right here. A lot of people will probably be like let's, let, on let Windows choose what's best for my computer. I don't know how people don't know about this. You have to come in here and check this. You change it to adjust for best performance. You hit apply and hit OK. That's one step. Another thing that you want to do is you want to type in edit power plan. OK. You can change advanced power settings. Actually, I lied. I lied. I lied. Choose power plan. I'm sorry. You could do choose a power plan. A lot of people will be on balanced. I don't, I don't, I don't even know why. This is a thing we're talking about for some reason. I, so I have ultimate performance. If you have ultimate performance, put it on ultimate performance. The reason I don't have it on, on ultimate performance right now is because of the certain speeds I have with the clocks and everything. It's just been on high performance and I have to retest and do a bunch of stuff if I change it to ultimate performance. So what you want to do is it'll probably be on balanced. It'll look like this and, or it may say something different. You just hit show additional plans and and you want to select the plan that is best for your computer. I'm seeing all this stuff too. Dynamic boost optimized CPU performance. Okay, so like I wouldn't want to run this, whatever, whatever. But that's something else that you want to do too. Other settings. I'm going to show my uh, NVIDIA settings. Oh, other stuff too. Internet settings. So if you come down here to your network and internet settings, you want to come down here and then you want to hit advanced network settings. And then you would hit... You can look at this. What you want to do is you want to hit Internet Protocol Version 4 and hit Properties. This is where your I, your DNS would be. I don't even know if you guys understand what this means, but I'm going to show you something a lot quicker to help this. And this is, again, in regards to ping. So I'm going to link this too. It's a program called DNS Jumper, okay? This is the site. I know it looks a little bit suspicious, but this is the site that you want to use 100%. You'll hit Free Download right here, and then something else will come up right here. I'll show you real quick. I'll open it up. I ran it for some boys. It'll be an app. It'll be a zipped file. 
you need to extract the file and then run it. It'll look just like this. It looks kind of crazy. I'll show you guys this test because it won't mess anything up. But what you do is you come in here, it'll look just like this. You'll hit fastest DNS. And what you'll do is you'll hit start DNS test. It'll run all this stuff. Just let it go. There's nothing wrong, nothing to be worried about in this. Let this run through. I mean, you're seeing some speeds. My cloud flare is looking like 17 ping, 17 ping. I, I think, honestly, that's what I'm on currently. There might be a better one, but this will seriously, seriously help your connection. I, I, I don't, it's unfortunate that a lot. So you heard that noise, obviously, I'm sure, but the test has finished. So look at that, 17 milliseconds. And then from here, all you do is you hit apply DNS and it'll put that noise. Once you do that, it'll be completely fine. A little message will pop up right here. That's, that's all you have to do. Once that does that, boom, no problem. Again, I'm gonna show you real quick the NVIDIA control panel, some other stuff. Open up my control panel, I'll show you my settings. I have done like legit optimizations of my computer. There's other videos out there for other stuff based on computers. I'm giving you what I'm running that I know for a fact is working the best for my computer and will definitely work for your computer. There's other videos you can watch them, no problem, but this is, I'm gonna run through this stuff. Things that are important through this, I mean, I'll try to go slow enough to where you can see. I'll, I'll even drag slower to where hopefully you guys can see. Hopefully it won't mess up. I just know that I, there's speculation about power management mode. I have mine ripped all the way up. My shader cache size, I know that's important. People talk about this, whatever. Unlimited, dude. I'm telling you, put it on unlimited. No problem. The texture filtering quality, high performance. That's juicing your frames like it's nothing. Blah, 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 blah. All this stuff, all this stuff. A lot of people, too, have um, their... Where is the on ultra the low latency mode? So I have mine off just because my computer is a tank. But if, if you have this, put this shit on ultra, put it on ultra. And from here, you'll just hit apply and save. So I'm, I'm just going to cancel that. So I don't make any changes, change resolution. Make sure you're in this dude. I mean, make sure you go in here. You might be at the top. I mean, I only have a display port cable. I'm 360 Hertz, 1440 P 360 Hertz, whatever. Make sure that you you have enabled your um, the max monitor hertz. I helped like three people the other day. All three of these boys had their monitor. They had two forty hertz monitor, one sixty five hertz monitor, and they were all on sixty hertz. Another important thing too is if you have a hertz monitor, like a high refresh rate hertz monitor, you have to have a DisplayPort cable. An HDMI cable will only support up to sixty hertz. Some of the newer ones, I don't know if it's like 1.2 HDMI, 1.2 or 2.2 or whatever it is. There's some number behind HDMI. Some of them will support up to like 120 or maybe even as high as 144. I don't know. But I know for a fact that if you have a high refresh rate hertz monitor, you have to have a DisplayPort cable. Most will probably come with a DisplayPort cable. I mean, if not, they're like $9, $10 for a DisplayPort cable at Best Buy or whatever. I'm going to show you my color settings too. This is important too. A lot. I mean given everything that I have right now. This is like legit juice. This will make your game crazy. So everything, make sure you're not on the, uh, make sure you're on completely on all channels. I keep my brightness exactly the same just because I adjusted off my monitor. It seems like it might even be a little bit bright right now, but contrast, I have to 70%. I mean, it's, it's just what I have. 70% gamma to 1.05 digital vibrance. I play with mine at 90. I tell people to put theirs at 80, but I just, it's completely personal preference, but I'm telling you, try these. Your game will look crazy, I promise. It'll look insane, it'll look so much better. You'll be able to see so much more in the game. I'll go into the game, I'll show you all that stuff. I'll show you my config file for the game, everything else. Uh, from here too, if you have a G-Sync monitor, I didn't. I don't believe I changed anything, whatever. But um, if you have a G-Sync monitor, cancel, why does that keep popping up? What the heck? Whatever. No, would you like? No, I wouldn't. Okay, G Sync. If you have a G Sync monitor, a lot of people feel like I didn't know this initially too. It took, I mean, a couple years back I learned it obviously, but disable G Sync. Just G Sync, even if you have a G Sync, Free Sync, whatever. I mean, realistically, this is only applying to G Sync. But if you have a G Sync monitor, do not enable it. The reason I've heard there's speculation from both sides, whatever, whatever. Yes, it may be clear, whatever, but tweaking those graphic settings will completely rid this anyway, as, as far as like clearness of the game. I just know that G-Sync adds delay, it adds delay, it adds screen delay, it adds input delay from your stuff, as far as rendering, all that stuff. I just know that it adds delay. Um, so completely disable G-Sync. Your screen might go black for a second, it's completely whatever, it's no problem. I'm trying to think of some other stuff. 
I have mine on quality, but I use the advanced. So you could click this and then pull it to performance, whatever. But I have mine, obviously, the advanced 3D image settings, and I tweak them. That's what that tweak was, so that's why that's there. Uh, rotate display. That's really nothing. Adjust desktop size and positioning. I've seen some stuff, full screen, whatever. I put this on no scaling just because talking with some boys of mine, it seems to be no scaling allows for the most, you can essentially juice the most frames out of your stuff. Coming from there, I'm trying to think of anything else I could show you real quick before I hop into my game settings. I can show you my game config file. Realistically though, I'll see if I can create like a Dropbox link to give you this, but I know for a fact that this game, my game config file, I'll actually just see if I can pull it up real quick and I'll scroll through it for the boys that want it, but I will try to link it. I will try to link it. I'll just, you just have to give me a second. Let me see if I am in, I gotta go to my documents, Call of Duty, players. And then my most recent file, which would be today would be this. This is what I have all my values set at. I'll, I'll literally make a copy of this. I have like, it gets rid of my cut screen. Like in this config file, I have completely get rid of the cut screen. I have all the audio off. It's, I have like the blood splatter completely turned off because all that does is it, it, it inputs delay and cuts down, cuts down on your frames and everything. So this is like perfectly optimized. I will try to share this with you guys. If you ask for it, maybe I'll even try to copy. I don't know if it's big enough to copy and put in the description or maybe even in a comment because of the character count. But if you guys message me, I'll drop you this. But for now, I'll literally let you look at all this. Again, I'm on a 4090, so like a lot of this is applying to mine but it will completely it's completely optimized as far as for anything that you guys have i'll scroll through this real quick i mean i don't even want to go into this because i can make a freaking 30 minute video in regards to just i could make a 30 minute video into everything about all this stuff but again i'm just trying to get this in front of you real quick before i load up into the game and show you all this stuff so Again, I'll go through. You guys let me know. I'll try to get that to you boys that want it. So anything else that I'm trying to think of before I load into the game? And the micro. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Yeah. Oh, also too, I, I'm not promoted by this or anything, but if you have bad ping and are playing somewhere with like, say, friends, let's say you're on East trying to play on West, I have gear up booster. I don't know if you boys know what that is. There's some stuff about it, like whatever, like this. I've never even activated it, but like people that talk about VPNs and stuff. I don't use it. Sometimes I use it. Sometimes I don't. I have like buddies that I used to play from college that used to play baseball with. They live West coast. So if I, I'll show you this real quick, but if I'm going to play with them, I can essentially jump my, again, with the DNS, it doesn't really affect anything. I can jump my server region to like West coast. If I want to play with them or central, if I'm playing on central. And again, people were using care booster initially for Fortnite to jump their, uh, to central to drop ping, whatever. But Currently, because I'm on the East Coast, I completely have my game to like render everything to um, all East Coast lobbies, pretty much. And it seems to work. I mean, my ping's currently dropping, dropping. It'll drop even more once I get into gang uh, to the game. But from there, I'll just launch my game. But right now, I'm not really running COD, so uh, all this stuff. I don't even. I have. Tr truth be told, everyone was like kind of giving me crap in the comments about running um ds4 like oh you're gonna get banned like i haven't even messed with this bot lobby stuff because i don't like i'm in no place to like attempt to put any type of like anything on my account to put it under to get flagged or anything people talking in the comments too about ds4 about you get cheated none of us are good enough to get banned using ds4 I, I, I think you guys might think that like this turns you into an aim bot you literally still have to be good at the game to, to benefit from DS4. You can't be a total bot at the game to get DS4 and then automatically you're going to get flagged for being banned. Like, you have to be good at the game initially. And truth be told, like, none of us are... I mean, some of you guys might be, but, I mean, as far as, like, casual play and then grinding rank, there's there's literally, like, over 60... I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen the videos all over line. There's literally videos of people running... Like over 60% of the people in the top 250 in multiplayer and Warzone, they're all literally cheating, like hard cheating, walling, undetectable, everything. And if you're worried about using a DS4 script that literally just cleans up your aim a little bit, meaning like it just counter sets your aim assist a little bit, I think that you're going to be completely fine. And I think you're worrying entirely. Again, I, I don't know like why people worry about it so much. Like you're not going to be performing at stages or 
anything on this game to where you're you're essentially worried about where you should be flagged for this anyway. So that's what I am. Obviously, I'm playing on controller. I'll show my controller real quick. Again, I wanted to make this video, but um, this PS5 controller. I have a control freak on, and I also I'll take this off real quick. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I also have a. Oh my bad. I also have a precision ring. I don't know if you guys know what a precision ring is. I would completely. I wish I was sponsored so I could tell you boys to go get one, but I would completely, completely, completely recommend getting a precision ring and a control freak. Some people play with the taller one, but again, I play double claw. So like, I have some custom binds over here, but I'm again, I'm jumping with this. I'm crouching with B. Um, still knifing with my stick, no problem. But uh, this is again. I don't know if you guys can see these triggers or let's see if I can get in a place where you can see these triggers they're completely digital touch I don't know if you guys can hear that in the game but all my bumpers and triggers and everything are digital touch and there's two buttons on the back which are to A and B but I don't even use them just because of the way I'm playing um, I got this from a 24 hour build from Cinch Gaming and a couple, it was, it's legit. It's like easily the best controller I have. So I'll show dead zones first. I don't play flipped. I play completely normal. I don't know what my controller vibrations on. I must've just got turned on on accident, but I do not play with controller vibration. Uh, my dead zones, I play two and five right now currently. And again, like I said in that old video, talking about, I don't want that to mess with my stuff at all. Like I don't want it to mess with it. So I'm ripping two and five. Left stick max 70. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've seen stuff, but um, that's just like what it is. That's what people play on. It activates your stick more. This is exactly what you want your stuff to look like. I've dropped my triggers all the way down again just to reduce click time and those very faint milliseconds of click time. I'm aiming, again, I play 6.6. Six, I play 0.8 right now. I Dang, I didn't even know I was that low, but I usually bounce around from 0.9 to 0.8 just depending on like what game mode I'm playing. Sometimes I'll even bounce from like 7.7 seven to 8.8. Eight, eight. It really just depends. But so far I've been on 6.6 six and I've been on like 0 0.85, 0 0.9. It's what I've been playing on. And again, I'll run through all this stuff too. So I'm here. Like the, I don't have anything. This is all completely, I believe, stock or whatever you would want to call it. Off the rip. I don't have anything, any of this stuff on. I have this down to 0.8. Response curve dynamics. Some people play linear. Some people also put linear on the DS4. I still play enhanced precision. It's just the stickiest. I can still move completely fine with it. No problems. I have this here, this here. I'll scroll through all this stuff real quick. Target aim says default. Black Ops, I'm pretty sure that default is still better than Black Ops. I don't know if anything's changed. My gameplay, I'm currently playing automatic attack sprint just because I just am. I can still, I've managed to been able to work a snake, but I'm not really doing anything crazy. This is all the stuff I have on. I'll show you all this stuff for movement based stuff. Everything, all this stuff is my combat behaviors for Warzone. I'll show you boys all this. I would seriously, like, I have done so much in regards to, like, trying to get all this stuff to be exactly what you'd want to play on this. All my boys, like, Kimbo hit all this stuff. Even my, so there's this manual fire behavior where, like, you can hold it. So this is for, like, a three round burst gun or a gun. Or for the Renetti, like, if you're playing ranked multiplayer and you shoot the Renetti and you hold it, it'll shoot, shoot. But there, it's, like, there's a delay with it. It's faster, at least for me, with these triggers to where I can get shots off faster if I just have it on press and not hold. So that's why I have that on that. My graphics settings. So if I share this, um, I mean, you guys can put this on, but I'll share that game config file with you guys. I got to figure out a way. Maybe I can drop a Dropbox or something, whatever. But this will all change. Uh, this will, your all your presets off that config file should uh, completely go to this. I play full screen borderless because I have three monitors. I have this central, uh, central monitor. I have a 1920 by 1080, 240, and then I have a 1440, 144 hertz that's vertically mounted just as my like Discord chat type um, monitor. But again, I'm on a 4090. Um, I play, this is exactly what I play. On plus boost. I still play on plus boost. Make sure if it's on, put it to on plus boost. I have this on custom. I have, so make sure you uncap your frames. That's just what it is, but I have it on limited, so it doesn't even really matter. Coming down through here, I have all this off quality custom. So make sure you're playing Fidelity XCast. I've seen a lot of people recently been switching to this because they're getting better frames, but I'm telling you that if you switch to this, you will get more delay. There will be more delay. You'll get more frames, but you'll still have more delay. It, I mean, I think it like is almost using, it's like, I'll show you guys real quick after this, but I have my Fidelity XCast strength at 100. Sometimes I bounce around from nine, uh, from like 80 to 100 to 90 sometimes, just depending on like where I'm at. My VRAM scale's at 80. It's just what's working best. I would completely 
suggest um, putting your stuff on this, copying this. Variable rate shading I have on. So this frame gen, you may have uh, the, uh, the option to put this on. Mine's obviously locked if you read, it's whatever. You do not want this on. It uses like AI to generate frames for you. It'll boost your frames, but man, does it add delay. I'm telling you, it adds delay. Texture as this is good. This is good. might be shocking to everyone. I know I'm on a tank of a computer that can absolutely pull ultra settings. No problem. I'm still ripping this very low. I don't know. I mean, you guys can see this loading screen. I'm pulling 180 frames in the loading screen. I, I get in game into multiplayer game. I'm over 450 hard. I wish, I mean, I could get a, the 540 Hertz 1920p, but uh, I'm pretty sure the human eye can only see like 500 anyway before it even gets ridiculous. And I was torn between that monitor and this 360 hertz, but I ended up getting this. But again, this may seem crazy to you guys, but I'm telling you, your game will look completely fine. If you follow all the tweaks and everything that I did, I'm very low, low, off, low, everything low or off, everything that I can, even this low, everything that can be off is turned off, everything that's low that can be low. And all those tweaks will allow this to offset. None of this will matter because this is directly correlated to juice, like being able to output as many frames as you can. My view, I play in 107. I know they say... If you play on FOV like 120, I guess you can, but I, there's something in the comments too about that, but you don't really want to play on this, I'm telling you. They say once you get over 110, they say once you get over 110, it completely, it messes up your, it like it rids your aim assist pretty much. So like the highest you can go to is 110. I, I was on 107, I might, I'll probably just keep it on 107 to be honest. I'm playing affected and default. Some people play wide, some people play narrow. I'm on default, it's just... What I've been playing, it looks the best. Again, come down here. Make sure these are on at least 50-50. All this stuff, make sure it's on completely no problem. I'm trying to look at some other stuff too. Audio, this is like a optimized um, thing that I've seen. So if some people play headphone bass boost. This is like what my tweaks that I have on. I'm on PC speaker, that's my input. All this stuff. I have my game volumes on here, voice chat on. I'm on open mic right now. I'm going to actually put that to push to talk. Sorry, I'll go back to that. My input device is my default system device, which is the mic I'm talking through right now. They say once you get down to here too, I gotta find where it is. It's in the audio preset. Where is it at? Oh, it's this right here. This reduced tinnitus, tinnitus, tinnitus sound? T-I-N-N-I-T-U-S. Tinnitus sound, maybe? That I allegedly is off. I mean, I probably butchered that word, whatever, but that is initially off. They say to enable that, and it does. It makes, with the PC speaker and that enabled, it, you can hear, like, if you listen to any pro streamer, like Strafe, any of those boys, where their, their footsteps sound ridiculously loud, I'm telling you, this will do it. it. It'll help it. Interface, I'm trying to think of anything interface. I have these subtitles. I have them, all this stuff off. This is exactly what I'm running. Anything else, I'm trying to think of anything else that you guys would want. My color customizations, this is what I'm running. Team party, enemy, neutral, all this stuff. I just... I like that blue, it just looks better. It's just personal preference, you. I rip a purple just because it sticks out like crazy and it's a little bit easier to see, whatever. No color filters, nothing, none of that stuff on. It's just what I have. HUD bounds, mini map, crosshairs, this is what I have. Oh, also too, if you have a bunch of stuff across the top of your screen, like your GPU speeds, all that stuff, you don't need that stuff on. This is where you change it right here. So I only have my FPS counter on. Server latency is bugged anyway with NA, so like not available, so you don't want it anyway. I don't even have my pack of loss because I don't really get pack of loss. And then the only things that I have on, you don't really need any of this stuff either because this isn't stuff you're really going to be worrying about in-game anyway. But your clock, I just have the clock on so I'm able to see the time even because obviously this gets into full screen and I can't really mess with anything else. But all I have on is my FPS counter. This will be whatever. So like this is probably what's on for you. I just come to custom and I leave it on custom. So if you look at the top, all that stuff. See my GPU graphics, my graphics card again is overclocked. <clears throat> That's some stuff too I've mentioned. Like if you want any of that stuff done too, I, I, I'm more than happy to help. But I just have to get on a schedule and try to figure that stuff out. I'm trying to think of anything else that I need to go over real quick before I do any, uh, get on out of here and end this video. Hopefully this wasn't too long. Any more questions you might have, I will try to go over them. If you have MSI Afterburner too, this is a good little thing. The last thing I'll show real quick. If you have MSI Afterburner, I would suggest pulling it to, I mean, this is just the, the what I have on it currently. So um, this power limit and all this stuff, pull this up so your fans, like your fan speeds, all that stuff. So that's up. Literally just pull that up so that way your fans are like essentially cooled meaning they're as low as they can go in regards to um, 
the speeds of your fans so that way your card and all your stuff can, can keep cool too. I'm trying to, I, honestly, gentlemen, I think that's, I know that might have been a long video, but if you have any questions or anything, I have this aim, my aim thing right here, and then the COD files that I can share with you guys right here. I'm going to try to figure out how to get that into a Dropbox. This is my preset for DS4, and then this is uh, my game files for this. Um, anything else? There's some stuff in network adapters that you can go to. Other than that, I mean, there's more, this is essentially what I can tell you. I, I do do a service where I'll, I'll get a little bit more in depth with some other stuff like testing your speeds, overclocking your, all your other stuff. So if you're interested in that, just hit me up. We can try to, I can try to get you on my schedule, but gentlemen, I appreciate everything. I appreciate all the love I got on my last video. I mean, it was, it was legit. So I'm here to help truthfully. I, again, you boys let me know. Take it easy.